still taller. All right, let me tell you a story. Good evening, friends and gentle persons. I am very excited to be here tonight. I want to get small, but despite the size of the story, it touches on a question that has been asked through the ages. Who would win in a fight? <laughs> Humanity asked this question in the days of the Roman circus. They asked it at the Hue Citadel in modern day Vietnam. We even ask it today. Who would win in a fight? Goku versus Superman. Goku, obviously. Tiger versus a bear. Yeah. It depends on the bear. Randy Johnson versus a dove. Randy Johnson, obviously. Also, this is your Waldo moment, ladies and gentlemen. Who would win in a fight? Scorpion or Spider? Dateline, August 23rd, 1934, in the far off land of Long Beach, California. We find ourselves in a musty garage. The scorpion enters the Black Widow's domain. Making a go at the spider, the scorpion foolishly gets its claw stuck in the spider's web. And the battle is on! Despite the successfully sprung trap, the spider does not rest on their laurels. Oh no. It begins the slow work of wrapping up the scorpion entirely. No simple task, however, as the scorpion is prepared to fight on until the end. Every time the spider draws near, it is driven back by furious lashings of the scorpion's stinger. Garage owner C.A. Pastorius observes the bout and ensures a clean fight. Like any good boxing match, let's get the tail of the tape. In the blue corner, we coming in at three inches long, weighing 0 0.025 pounds, with muddy claws, eight legs of death, and a furious stinger to pump its enemies full of poison. In the red corner, with her hourglass figure, we have the Black Widow, coming in at one inch long, weighing 0 0.0025 pounds, also eight legs, of, with subtle webs, also eight legs of death, and a venomous bite to impart the killing blow against its foe. <laughs> so no solo movie. So, now that we know our combatants, let's take a moment. Think to yourself, who do you got? Who do you bet on? Observers of the bout give the spider superior betting odds at the moment, but do you agree? We'll just have to find out. But it's gonna take a little while. For my friends, this is no one round TKO. No wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. This is a knockdown, drag out battle of titans. <laughs> what? I Let's begin not just the second round of our bout, but the second day of combat. Dateline, August 24th, 1934. Carrying the momentum into the second day, the spider gains a great advantage, spending the night wrapping more and more of the web around the scorpion. The brute has both of its powerful claws wrapped up. The scorpion would occasionally break free of its bonds, only to be quickly wrapped up again. The master tactician, the spider, decides to change up the battlefield using what must be some amazing feat of engineering. It begins to lift the scorpion into the air, raising it about three to six inches off of the ground. Face to the heavens! The scorpion must do something drastic 
or meet its maker. Well, I suppose I must reveal a grim truth about, a grim truth that the crowd knows, but these gladiators do not. Given that both are venomous creatures that could potentially harm humans, they will both be sentenced to death, regardless of the outcome. The crowd, thirsty for blood and answers, <laughs> will let the battle play out. Then upon victory, our champion shall be crushed. Hey, but what a crowd it was! Newspapers report that they... <laughs> but what... News pit neighbors, news hawks, and cameramen, leading me to believe that when they say garage, they mean the variety above. I also found that August 24th was a Friday. No wonder it was so packed. It's Friday night, it's the depression, you're looking for something to do, so you grab your best gal and you show her something she ain't never seen before. As with any good fight, there's lots of money on the line. As I, uh, as I hinted at earlier, the crowd starts taking bets. Given the spider's strong start, betting opens with four to one odds in the spider's favor. Though, by now, with the scorpion ascending heavenward, those odds could very well be in flux. Will the odds change? Those who bet on the scorpion sure hope so. They hold faith as their, uh, in their champion as the battle draws into its third day. <laughs> Though that light of faith grows dim, my friends, exhausted, the scorpion's vigor drops and the spider begins to enmesh the scorpion's most powerful weapon, the stinger, as pictured above. <laughs> Odds jump to five to one in the spider's favor. Not a great sign for Team Scorpion. Though, the arrogance of victory can have its costs. Focusing solely on neutralizing the stinger, the spider loses track of the rest of the scorpion's arsenal. Unnoticed, the scorpion has once again broken one of its claws free from its bonds. Resting then for a moment on a silky strand, the spider swayed too close to a free foreclaw. The spider, scorpion grabs the spider, take, taking hold of the spider's front legs. Alas, the scorpion cannot act though, as by now the stinger is fully tied down by web. All it can do is hold tight, store its energy, and await the moment it can go from small advantage to total victory. Each a prisoner of the other. Neither could get into position to unleash the poison which would end the fight. So there they float, still dangling in the air, silent and motionless, as the crowd settled for an all-night vigil. <laughs> we carry ourselves in the day four, after a longer day and a longer night. All right, so I didn't have a good newspaper image, so please enjoy my boy, Nick Diaz, waggling his ass at Anderson the Spider Silva. Actual nickname. Anyway, as dawn rises, the crowd gathers again. The spider is still locked in the scorpion's embrace. The spider faces a difficult choice. It chooses disfigurement and victory over death calling up all the strength it has in its tiny frame, it rips itself free at the price of one leg and half of another. <laughs> On the short end of what is now 20 to one odds, the scorpion, like a gulliver bound with Lilliputian strands. <laughs> it's from the newspaper article. Uh, <laughs> Struggle, 
<laughs> struggled until its forelegs were swollen and paralyzed. Sensing the damage it had done, it rallied, hooking out and breaking free of the webs. The spider, still reeling from the sudden amputation, was on the ropes. The scorpion was finally on the offensive. The full breadth of its strength and weaponry available to it. The scorpion, seeming passive in its fate this whole time, had roped a doped its foe. <laughs> this is it. It charges, venomous stinger primed, thrusting towards the enemy, an inch away from victory! <laughs> an inch from victory is as close as the scorpion shall get. Right as the killing blow was about to land, city prosecutor John K. Hull stepped into the ring. I'm so <laughs> I'm sorry, boys, he said, but the Humane Society has complained about the show. The scorpion and the spider are both chloroformed. After days of hardship, battle, and strife, their lives end quietly. But what a show! <laughs> I love, I love that despite zero connection to the place, the combatants, or anyone involved in this story, I find myself instantly caught in the drama of the fight and the tragedy of their blue ball deaths. Uh, and I hope you did too. Not too shabby for an otherwise unremarkable weekend in Long Beach. So, here's to the small dramas that play out every day all over the world. The hidden secrets of all the newspapers. And most importantly, here's to our tiny gladiators destined to die. We salute you. Thank you, Aaron. So I hope you enjoyed the show tonight. Uh, I also was remiss if I did not call out the amazing artwork by Imogen Spears. Uh, thank you for that as well. And a huge thank you to all of our speakers tonight. Aaron, Casey, Courtney, Edmund, Megan, and Scott. Please give them another round of applause. And Another thing too, our speakers do this because they love doing this. They do not get paid unless you count booze and books. Um, and the speaker's gift tonight was a collected edition of Oscar Wilde's works. Um, also, next, in three weeks, we have Stories on Charles Ponzi, the originator of the Ponzi scheme. Screaming Jay Hawkins and his onstage antics. Sex education and birth control in the 1800s. The infamous US beef scandal. The sexuality of Eleanor Roosevelt. And Sally Stanford, the madam turned mayor. Curated by Tamar Baskind, it's sex, money, and politics. It's Odd Salon Scandal. Also, I would notably like to thank one more person. I would like to thank Michael for all of your hard work. Uh, he was an incredible curator. Give it up. So as a little token, thank you. We have tonight's speaker book, Yay. the collected work of Oscar Wilde. 
and your very own little uh, pink blossom footed wild nature Harvey to enjoy. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you. you will see more photos of him on my Facebook page. And uh, also, one other note, uh, curation is now open for Abandoned on April 17th, which is just one week after Scandal, and that will be curated by Stuart Gritman. So, if you are inspired by tonight's talks and want to join the stage, and we absolutely encourage you to do so, please submit your brilliant ideas to us at oddsalon.com speak. Also, please join our email list, uh, also through oddsalon.com, to keep up with upcoming salons and speaker news. Uh, between salons, you can find us online in all the usual places. And finally, join the ongoing conversation in our Facebook group, Something Weird. Uh, we'll be posting our follow-up reading lists uh, from the speakers tonight uh, and other links that are related to them. And we welcome you to join us and share stories that inspire you as well. And thank you again uh, also to the venue, to all of our wonderful volunteers who helped make this happen. Thank you all for coming, and we will see you next time. <laughs>